Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God says in Wisdom chapter 3, verse 9, Those who trust in Him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with Him in love, because grace and mercy are upon His holy ones, and He watches over His elect. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, my name is Maria. I am from Miami, Florida, and Joel Jejo was a dearly beloved friend of mine and a wonderful co-worker in Christ through the ministry of Anointing Fire Catholic Youth Ministry. But above all of that, Joel was like my elder brother, my Chertai. I met Chertai around six years ago through ministry, and ever since then, he has been a beautiful role model of what it means to truly lead a holy life. Over the past month, we have heard so many things about Joel through his various talks, through the words of his family and friends about how loving he was to everyone he encountered. But how was it that this 22-year-old young man was able to lead the life that he did? My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, the answer is Jesus. Joel's foundation in his life was Jesus. He allowed Jesus to guide him in every step, every breath that he took. And that is how he was able to lead the life he did. And so now I want to take you into a small sneak peek of the fraction of my understanding of Joel's life and how beautifully he led it and how he was able to lead it. In our ministry, we have three pillars by which each one of us, especially Joel Chertai, try our best to live our lives upon. And these three pillars are honesty, humility, and holiness. And I can tell you with full faith that Joel is a prime example of how to live these virtues out in your life faithfully. The first pillar is honesty. In everything that Joel did, he was honest, whether it be in his words, in the things that he did, the way that he treated his uh, family and friends, or even the people that he just encountered through his actions, through his work, every single aspect of Joel's life was truth. It was honest. He never tried to be something or someone that he knew he wasn't. And this was truly most evident to me, not only through his actions, but also his words. I was recently scrolling through some of our old messages, especially the messages that he sent to all of us youth ministers. And I came across quite a few messages where Joel would share his insights on the word of God. And you can truly hear, when you read his words, you can truly hear the honest and deep love he had for Jesus and for the word of God. And the beautiful part is, is that he not only preached it, but he practiced what he preached. You could see that in his life. I could recognize that after I'd read something that he shared with us, I could see a small change in him, the slightest change in him. And even then, even despite the, the number of insights that he shared with us, Joel did a number of things in secret. He never hid his spiritual life from anyone, but even then, the majority of how he led his life was a secret to the world. And this brings me to our second pillar, which is humility. Joel Jardai never allowed anyone to praise or to glorify anything that he did. And for that very purpose, a lot of what he did was behind the scenes. And I can personally attest to this because over the past year, I have had the beautiful blessing of being able to work with him firsthand and see the things, just even if it's a small fraction, honestly, of what he did for the kingdom of God. I'll just give you one small example of one ministry that Joel faithfully took part in, and this ministry was the Global Children's Ministry of Anointing Fire. Every month, this ministry would have an intercession on Zoom every month, and Joel was the one who helped organize this. And aside from that, when the time, when the time allotted to the United States ministry came, Joel would be on there the entire time. He would be on the line the entire time. He would pray with the children. He would worship with the children. He would encourage the children. Sometimes he'd give word of God to the children. Mind you, these aren't youth. These are not teenagers. These are young children. He had such a burden for souls that he wanted to bring up children in the faith from a young age. 
My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, this was not the only thing that Joel did. I can guarantee you, if you name any ministry, any ministry over the past year and even the years prior, I can guarantee you that Joel had a part in it. Joel took part in everything. See, whether it be uh, organizing registration online or taking care of the website or emailing people who registered, organizing the event itself, communicating with different ministers, communicating with uh, different registrants, whether it be even hosting the event itself. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, so much. This soul did so much for Jesus' kingdom, but he never sought credit. He never sought appreciation, and rather, instead, he praised and glorified everyone else, especially he thanked God. I want to correct myself. He did not praise and glorify the person, but rather he praised and glorified Christ for working through those people to bring souls closer to Jesus. He thanked Jesus for the talents and gifts that he bestowed upon the people that he worked with, upon different ministers, upon different youth, upon those he encountered. He thanked the Lord. This is just a small fraction of an example of his humility. Joel Jardai had such a burden for souls that he never wanted the praise he gave someone to take root in their heart as a seed of pride. And to prevent that, you might find him probably roasting someone after thanking them for something that they did or telling them that they did a great job or maybe he'd tell them to go pray. And I can tell you he has done this to me countless times. In fact, he just did it to me past May. Um, but what I can tell you 100% is that the humility of Joel is something we must all look up to. His, hum his humility was something that he lived in his life. It was something that he practiced in his life. It wasn't something he only preached. The last pillar of our ministry, and definitely the most important, is holiness. It is so difficult to capture the holy life that Joel led. There honestly aren't enough words in the English language for me to capture it. But one thing I can definitely tell you, my beloved young people, Joel's life is a testament to the fact that it is 100% possible to lead a holy life while living in this world and not of it, but rather of Jesus. In the very beginning of this, uh, of this video, I shared a word of God with you. It was Wisdom chapter 3, verse 9. And in the beginning of this verse, it says, Those who trust in the Lord will understand truth. Now, the very first reason as to why Joel was able to lead such a holy life in the first place was because he trusted in the Lord. He trusted in Jeremiah 29, 11. As many of us know, it's his favorite verse. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for your harm, to give you a future of hope. He trusted in these words so firmly that this trust filled him with the knowledge and understanding to know the truth about Christ, the truth that is Jesus Christ. The next part of this verse, it says, the faithful will abide with him in love. The faithful will abide with him in love. Joel realized the truth that there was nothing he could do in this world without Christ. And therefore, he made Jesus a priority in his life. He made it the foundation of everything he did. He remained faithful to Jesus in every aspect of his life, especially until the very last moment of his time on earth. And this faithfulness to Jesus and to the word of God is why he was able to abide with Jesus and in his heart. It is this faithfulness that led him to love the people in his life just like Jesus did. I know there are so many people that I have come to, to know who knew Joel and they'd say, I saw Jesus' love through Joel. I saw Jesus' love manifested through Joel. And like everyone else, I also have experienced this special and unique love in my life. When I mentioned that Joel was like my big brother, I truly meant it. I mean that I love, I respect, and I value him as my elder brother. And I'll just give you one example from my own life. So when I first began university, on my very first day, uh, Joel called me literally just a few minutes before I walked into my first class just to check up on me, to wish me good luck on my first day, and to let me know that he was praying for me. He made sure that he knew I was pr he was praying for me. And then at the very end of the week, the very end of my first week, 
he called me once again to make sure that I had settled in, that I was already settled into my room because he knew I was staying away from home um, and that I had made friends. He asked me how my classes were, how my teachers were, whether I enjoyed my time at the school during that first week and just simple things like that, right? Um, and it just reminded me, he reminded me once again that he was praying for me and that he loved me very much and that he couldn't wait to see how I grew in this university. And he did this countless times, not just then, but countless times throughout my life in countless different situations, regardless of how busy he was or how hectic his schedule was. He always made time for me. And I can tell you so many, almost every single person in his life can say the same. For me, this is just one example of how every single interaction that I have had with Jerdai was a manifestation of the love Jesus had for me. Joel not only abided in the love of Christ, but he gave this love that he had to all those he encountered, not just his dear family and friends, to the people that he, he knew at work, to the people that he met at retreats, to random acquaintances that he'd meet through friends. He shared this love. And this itself was a grace. It is not something that he was able to do on his own. Which brings me to the very next part of Wisdom, chapter 3, verse 9, which says, Because grace and love, sorry, grace and mercy are upon his holy ones. Joel was honest. He was humble. He trusted in the Lord. And he was faithful to the truth of Christ. And all of this, it guided him in leading a holy life in the love of Christ. But this was only possible through the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of what Joel did was in secret. A lot of what he did was in secret. Not, I, I can guarantee you, there isn't a single person on this earth who knows 100% everything that he did for the kingdom of God. But as it says in Matthew 6, 6, your father who sees in secret will reward you. God the Father saw everything that he did despite the fact that we weren't able to experience what he did in his spiritual life. As a result, God rewarded Joel. And this brings me to the very last part of Wisdom chapter 3, verse 9, which says, He watches over his elect. The Lord saw every single thing that Joel did in his life for his kingdom. And while he was here, he rewarded, rewarded Joel by watching over his parents, his siblings, his closest friends, um, even his acquaintances, his education, his work. So literally every aspect of his life, the Lord watched and took care of it because he knew that Joel's heart was his. And the biggest, the ultimate reward that the Lord gave to Joel was fulfilling his biggest desire. And that was to become a saint, eternal life with Christ. That was his biggest desire, to know Jesus fully and Jesus truly granted that wish to him. And I cannot thank the Lord more, more and more for this beautiful blessing that he bestowed on Joel and on all of our lives. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I simply have one request, one simple request. Do not let the light that is Joel's life be hidden. Do not hide his light. Let it shine bright through you. I can tell you whether you knew him or not, if you are listening to this video, he is praying for you. He is interceding for you because that is who Joel Jijo was. That is who Joel Jijo is. My beloved brother and sister, whoever is watching this right now, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you are given the grace to be able to shed light upon every person that you meet. Shed the light of Christ on every person you meet. May the love of Christ flow from you and radiate through you into the entire world, just like it did through Joel. You know, for me, one thing that was very special to me was Joel's smile. This is something many people have been talking about. Joel's smile was so beautiful. You would never see him frowning. And I remember uh, after, after he had gone away, I was praying and I was asking the Lord, Lord, give me strength. Lord, give me strength. And the one thing that I just heard in my head was simply smile, simply smile. My beloved daughter, please just smile because Joel's smile itself touched hearts. 
if you can smile with the smile that Joel did, I encourage you to do the same. I encourage you to smile the Joel Jojo smile. May you shed light onto the entire world. May you proclaim the love of Christ everywhere you go, just like Joel did. Never let his legacy die down. Take your life. If you, if you are not close to Christ, my beloved brother and sister, I encourage you to take Joel's life. Take his example and change one thing in your life. Just one thing. I'm telling you, even myself, I have changed certain aspects of my life simply by looking at Joel's life. Even after he passed, before he passed, I changed certain things about my life after getting to know him better. And now after, I continue to. And I aspire my best to be able to be a Joel Jejo to whoever I meet. No one can ever amount to who he was, but if I can be a small fraction of the blessing he was in my life to other people, that itself would be a blessing to me. So my beloved brother and sister in Christ, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, may God give you peace, may God bless you, may he anoint you, and may the light that is Joel Jejo shine forever through you. Amen. God bless you all. And as always, be holy and be on fire. Amen.